Speaking of reward, I think all of you should get a reward for making it to church today. Amen. It is good to be with you and good to have those that are joining us online. Every week I talk to someone who is joining us online and I am reminded, so I don't see everyone that's attending here, but often we have some really faithful and committed members that are joining us online today. So, it's good to be with you. The sermon theme for today is Welcoming Others. Welcoming Others. Lori Smith designs websites for people getting married. This past Friday, the Supreme Court ruled that Lori can refuse to work for same-sex couples in spite of a state law that protected against discrimination based on sexual orientation, race, gender, and other characteristics. Lori filed seven years ago under the premise of free speech and not being forced to say something that she doesn't believe. She has to work with all people, but she cannot be forced to speak against her own belief. She says she has LGBTQ clients. It is her message that she wants to protect. She states this is a victory for all Americans. No one should be forced to say something that goes against their belief. This is not about the who, but the what, her lawyer says. No longer can the government bully us into saying what we do not believe. This federal court ruling means anyone in the United States cannot be sued for refusing services that require them to speak against their beliefs. While this case, one, was based on the argument of free speech, which I think is pretty clever, it's really about exclusion based on belief system. Lori Smith believes in something so strongly that even before she started her business, and before she's actually had an LGBTQ client that wants to use her services to get married, she's become the poster child of free speech for conservative Christians. It's so important she's been in legal juxtaposition for seven years. She's had persecution in her words and threats. But all of that came out when the Supreme Court on Friday ruled in her favor. She took one for the two. On the weekend of July 4th, when we celebrate our independence from Great Britain, we also reflect on our documents that point towards life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for all and religious freedom. We get to practice our belief and practice without interference from others. If we want to throw around snakes because we believe God will save us, toss them on the ground. If we want to refuse blood transfusion because it goes against our belief, doctors leave us alone. And if we believe that marriage is between a man and a woman, it's our belief. But when does belief become exclusion? When does what I or you believe give me permission to discriminate against another human being? When does freedom become an imposition on others? Right here in Chicago, another church that meets just like us called Powerhouse International have a trans member in the church that was kicked out. Now they had met with her three times privately and warned her dressing like a woman was against their church rules. Imagine this, that in their church rules they have something that tells people how they should dress. Her name is Antoine Hayward. And Antoine Hayward agreed, but then showed up at church in her attire. In court on video, you can hear the pastor telling her to get out and go put on new clothes. What you do out there is your business, but what you do in this church is my business. And you are not going to dress like a woman in my church. You're going to dress like a man. I'm not going to allow it. My salvation is too important. God is holding me to it. And he continues, but you guys get the message. 
I don't need to say all of what he said. You know what he says? What does welcome mean? What does it mean for us to welcome others? Do we welcome people that look like us? Do we welcome people when they come to our church? What does welcome look like on Monday, Thursday, or Saturday? Do we welcome others when it's convenient? What about when it maybe it's a little hard? What does welcoming others require of us? What sacrifices do we have to make to welcome others? What does it mean to make space for others? Is it enough for it to be in some document who we are? What does welcome mean? Jesus was preparing his disciples in this text to go out and share some good news. How many of you could use some good news on that? He was trying to get them ready mentally for what they might experience when they went out. Some people might be hostile. Some people might not be on that reception. Some might reject what you have to offer. Some might not want to hear what you have to share. Some might not be overjoyed. Some might not be upset. In fact, when you're out there, it's fair game what you might experience. At best, Jesus was trying to let you know, I need you to get ready. Notice they didn't wait for folks to come to them, but they went out to share the good news. They took the good news to people. And this is what Jesus said, if you welcome those who I sin, the text says, you welcome me. You welcome the prophet, you welcome me. You welcome a righteous person, you welcome me. You give a cold cup of water and your name from the disciple, I got you. Even later, if you read further in Matthew, Jesus goes on to say, whatever you do for the least of these, welcome the trains, you welcome me. Welcome the gang member, you welcome me. Welcome the one with voices that we don't hear, you welcome me. Welcome the one who is lost, you welcome me. Welcome the widow, you welcome me. Welcome those struggling, you welcome me. Welcome the pride to all. We start not with the freedom of speech, but the freedom to love. Welcoming others is about as Christian as you can get. When you go to the mall, there are many different doors you can enter depending on what you want to do at the mall. You can enter at J.C. Penney's. I got any J.C. Penney's folks? You can enter at Kohl's, or you can enter at Macy's, or you can enter at Target, or you can enter at the food court. A few there to get your steps in, you can enter through that entrance. It depends on where you want to go. As Christians, I think our entry is always love. Our entry into the people's lives is love. We enter through the door of love. We struggle with judgment, but our superpower is love. Always has been, always will be. We just have to use it more often. Judgment pushes people away, but love, love brings them in. Love lifts them up. Love heals. Love corrects. Love guides. Love builds up. Love encourages. Love blesses. We welcome others by being absolutely free in our ability to love. You welcome these folks, and you have welcomed the Lord in your space. Every year since I've pastored, I get complaints about the people on our lawn. This year is no different. And United, I need your input too, but I struggle. I'm like, what would Jesus do? Because there's quite a few people that want to just get them off, want to get them off. But every vendor I have met that's selling goods in front of our church is out there doing the same thing I'm trying to do. Make enough money to support themselves. They're not ready. They might be a little assertive about their product, but they are trying to support themselves. In our capitalist country, everything costs money. We can see them as a nuisance, or we can see them as undesirable, like others in our community. We can see them as bothersome, but they are a 
perception of the economic state of our country called the have not. And they have chosen to be proactive by buying and making goods and selling them. One lady told me she's there because people told her, come sell your nachos right there on 53rd Street. Most of them I talked to have a peddler's license. But what would it look like if all of us welcomed them? What would, what would welcome you for them? Maybe a greeting. Maybe an acknowledgement. Maybe just to speak and not walk by someone without speaking. Maybe a conversation. Maybe a snow cone purchase. Maybe a prayer. Maybe I bless you. We have a superpower, and Christians, we aren't using it enough. It's called love. Love is our superpower. Maybe we can model something to the businesses that want to get rid of the peddlers. Maybe we can welcome them. Maybe we start there. A teacher stands before her class with a hundred dollar bill. She holds it up before her class for the whole class to see. She says, who wants this hundred dollar bill? Raise your hand. Everybody, every kid raises their hand. She then takes the dollar, the crisp one hundred dollar bill and she crumbles it up. And then she looks at her class and says, who wants this hundred dollar bill? Every kid in the class still raises their hand. Now she does something not so clean. She throws the bill on the floor and she steps on it with her shoes. So I might say that's a little bit nasty. Maybe some of us would also pull back. But when she asks the class, who wants the hundred dollar bill? Guess how many people raise their hand? Every kid still raised their hand. No matter what she did to that hundred dollar bill, all the hands in the classroom went up. And you know why? Because the value still stayed the same. In love, we welcome people from various walks of life. And the value of that welcome is still the same. Even when folks are not all that present, we welcome them. When folks are dirty and not at their best, we welcome them. When folks are going through, we, we welcome them. Life's difficulties, we welcome them. Can't understand what they're saying necessarily, can't make sense. We welcome them. The value of our love is still the same. Crumbled up, it's still the same. Tossed down and stepped on, it's still the same. In fact, I argue with you, the value of our love has gone up in 2023. Love keeps value. While we are trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. I says today and yesterday, keep my commandments, love others as much as you love yourself and love the Lord your God and you will keep all the commandments. With the same love that's been shown to us again and again and again, we welcome, welcome, welcome Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this uh, week of independence, we know that not all are independent, not all are free. We know that our country is in a unique place. Along with the Supreme Court decision to allow people freedom of speech, also this week, affirmative action was struck down. On this week, some other things have happened. So we know that we have a struggle before us. But we also know that we are called to love. That that is our beginning chapter, and that is our end chapter. And so Lord, let us hear this biblical text again, the call to love as a place of reconciliation, as a place of engaging others, as a place
place of living out our call to be Christians. Keep us united. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.